Okay, let me uh, let me show you this. I found something weird again, and uh, we're gonna investigate this. Look at this. So here is some pictures. This once again in the Macarian chain data, and you can see this line out here on this side. And at first glance, you might think, okay, big deal. You managed to catch a satellite or a shooting star or something like that. But no, look at this. If I go through this this series of images here, you see how it moves, and you think, okay, fair enough. It's it's a satellite, but what puzzles me is this. Each of these images is five minutes long, and the total size here is only a few degrees across the entire field. That means that this thing with over the five frames it's visible, that's 25 minutes of total data it took from moving here to here, it's only moved a few degrees meaning this is moving extremely slowly, way too slow for what I would expect a satellite to move. And we're gonna try to figure out what it is. Okay, the first thing we want to do to try to figure out what on earth we're dealing with here is um, we're just gonna get some quick pixel values. This picture hasn't been played so, so we don't have the RAs yet. We're gonna do that later. Um, but for now, let's just get some quick pixel values and try to get a guesstimate for how quick this thing was actually moving, as we can use that to eliminate a large number of objects um, when we're doing our search here. So, 175 and 1375 seems to be the starting point. So, I'm just gonna, gonna write that down. Now, we're gonna jump over to the last image where we can see it. So, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes later. Great. There we have the, uh, the pixel values. So, now, we can just take and see how far it moved. And with Pythagoras, we got the total distance. We can quickly jump into Telescopius just to double check. Is this the right setup? Using that one and that one. Yes, that looks right. I also thought I already had a setup here. So we can see here that we had a pixel scale of 2.27 um, arc seconds per pixel, so around seven degrees per hour. This is what puzzles me, right? Because if this was a low Earth, or we can see in the picture that it's it's very bright, right? So it's clearly something that's probably quite close to Earth, as it is quite bright, as we can see here. We would not expect a asteroid or a comet to be this bright unless it was really really close. So I don't think that's it. It's moving way too slow to be anything in low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit, we're looking at 200 plus degrees per hour. We're looking at seven here. So, so they're way too close. Medium Earth orbit, 30 degrees per hour. Geostationary, we're getting a little closer. Technically, they shouldn't move, but as we are tracking, we should actually see a 15 degree per hour drift of the geostationary satellites. Um, but still then, even then, with a 15 degrees an hour, we are still like a factor of two away from the actual movement speed that we are seeing. And again, as I said, asteroids, we're looking at like arc minutes per hour and not degrees. So the only thing I can think of is that maybe this is something in some kind of like graveyard orbit, um, you know, where they put it into the highly elliptical orbits on some non-standard orbit. I'm not sure what it is. Boom, there we go. Okay, plate solve is done. So now when we hover over it here, we can see we now have that uh, alpha beta numbers down there. That's our right ascension and declination information that we now have as well. There, 21, 15, 10 is the timestamp. And that is, of course, GMT plus one. So we need to subtract one hour for, for UTC. I've written down the right ascension and declination, and I converted it into degrees for the right ascension and for a decimal hour for the uh, declination, the right ascension and declination. And then I took the UTC timestamp from the file name and I converted that into a Julian date. And here is the exact coordinates where that picture was taken. This is a tool that you can use to look for moving objects, basically, um, where you just define a center point and then a cone, like a you search in a cone around that point in a radius, you define stuff like that. Um, very nice. This one, though, only holds like asteroids and comets, like natural satellites, um, not artificial ones. I'm not expecting to find anything here, um, but it's worth a try. So um, let's just go ahead and... Uh, okay, we got quite a lot, actually. Wow. We got a lot of main-built outer-middle objects. See that? MB means main-built, outer-middle 
And I guess there should also be inner, but we haven't found any inner objects here. They're all extremely low. What is the, can we, can we sort this? No. 18, 16 is the brightest so far. So 16 is the brightest so far. And when I was looking, last time I was looking at this data and I found the, um, the, uh, the asteroid in it, that was a magnitude, I think around 14. So that was like two orders of magnitude um, brighter. I remember, this is a logarithmic scale. So it was two orders of magnitude brighter than that. And that was very, very faint. This is way, way brighter than that. So it's definitely none of these. All of these are way too faint to be what we're looking for just by looking at the visual magnitude. And you can also see this is like 20 arc minutes off. This is quite far off the center of our cone, which should be where it's supposed to be. So I'm pretty confident that we are not dealing with any kind of uh, um, of natural satellite. And as expected, also from the brightness, this is probably something a lot closer to Earth. Okay, I just updated my Stellarium to fit the actual location where we were at. I just want to see, because Stellarium actually has quite a few artificial satellites and if we're lucky maybe it has yeah so here we have the chain um if we're lucky maybe it actually has that satellite so um we can know that it came from over here it moved over towards that like those two merging galaxies so we should see something moving over here very slowly across the field something like that so moving uh from right to left but of course we need to set the correct date Okay, we got the time set now to exactly where the actually was taken 10 seconds in. So that there, there, that should be the exact time that this thing started. Um, let's try to let time evolve and maybe speed it up a bit so we can see. Remember, it took 25 minutes for this to move across the frame. Oh, that's way fast. It's already gone. But I did not see anything move here at all. Yeah, there it is. You can see this is the kind of speeds that you would probably expect from a satellite as it is moving a lot closer. What is this? NORAD something? Okay. But again, this is moving across the frame in a few seconds and it took 25 minutes. I'm not seeing anything here, so I don't think Stellarium have it, whatever it was. So let's move on and try something else. So what do we do next? We are gonna go to another tool, another uh, data source. Um, this is a data source that specifically allows you to track um, human-made satellites. So actual, you know, pieces of junk that we <laughs> threw up into space. And it works kind of similar only that it's a little bit less refined if you ask me like you put in a query and you basically just ask like oh you want a specific group of satellites or you want a specific whatever search by a specific catalog number and then you just ask what format and it just spits out the location of all the satellites in that group and then you have to kind of sort of like like filter through them yourself to figure out like which one is actually in the locations you were looking for so it, it's kind of just like dumps a bunch of data at you and then you're gonna have to figure it out yourself so I whipped up a very quick um, script, Python script. I'm not sure if this is correct. I hope it is, let's see. Okay, it already done and it found nothing, but it did spit out a data file. Let's take a look at it. Invalid query. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it worked with Geo. So that should be geostationary orbit. I thought it would have a Leo group as well. Okay, download something. Group Leo not found. So it's like 500 and a bit satellites we've been looking for and none of them seems to be within like half an hour in RA and half a degree. And uh, I know that's not really comparable. So just to put something in, but there's nothing within that box basically. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. Um, I mean, clearly there's something. I mean, that's not nothing. I was like, there are loads of interesting, like also notice the change in brightness. Also the little wavy, those are the lines kind of indicates my guiding, I guess. It's actually quite fun to look at. Okay, so I'm a little stumped now. 
I um, I don't know where to go from here, to be honest. I mean, it, there's clearly something, and I want to know what it is, because I'm too curious. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put out a little bounty here. If any of you guys can figure out, I was going to say the first to figure out what this is, and send it to me in an email, I'll put email or everything in the description, um, I'll give you a free mug or a free t-shirt of choice from, uh, from my merch store. I, I just recently launched a merch store, um, deepspacebooks.com. Um, and it, the first one to, to, to send me proof what this is, um, you get a, uh, you get a mug or t-shirt on me. Um, because I'm too curious. <laughs> so, again, you should have all the information you need. I'll be posting, as I said, everything in the description. So yeah, I really hope you guys can uh, can help me figure out what on earth this is, and um, I'll of course be pinning it in the comment below when we eventually figure out what it is. So uh, good luck, and uh, when you figure it out, please tell me how you did it. Setting and reprocessing some old data from earlier this year, and I came across this. If we go up here to processes menu, you will see there is a ton. And I mean a ton of them. And 